Welcome to week one of the Illustriad, where Iron Boffin, representing Demeter and the Earth Pantheon, are taking on MBT, representing Aeolus and the Wind Pantheon. These two casts are excited to throw down, and I'm excited to see if we're going to see MBT's stellar Hydrake in this clash. Be sure to leave a comment down below of who you think is going to win, and make sure you guys like and subscribe for more Illustriad. Oh, and be sure to check out our shop at shopillustrials.com to pick up some sweet starter decks and more. If you missed the deck profile, this is what I'm particularly interested about. Iron Boffins bring a huge defensive core with Spinems and Sprouters. He's got a little bit of wind mixed in there as well. And then you've got MBT rocking Thunder and Wind, trying to utilize things like Astrabits and Joltins to search for stadiums and kind of get exactly the pieces he wants to ultimately get out that Hydrake and beyond. This is looking to be an epic clash, so let's dive in. All right, here we go. It looks as though MBT is going to be kicking this one off. Representing Aeolus and the Wind Pantheon, of course. And he's going to start things off with a nice Nectar of the Gods. That's going to give him the opportunity to draw two cards right off the rip. This is an optimal first turn play here. And one of the things about Nectar of the Gods, you look at this card and you say, oh, this is a no-brainer. I'm going to run three Nogs because why wouldn't I? I get to just draw a free card. But when you think about it, a lot of decks actually don't run three Nectar of the Gods. And, and I'll explain why. In other games, you can play gate cards like Pot of Greed, which just draw two cards for free. But in Illustrals, this is costing you 10% of your spirit deck. That's pretty significant. So Nog is often best played in the early game, right? When you have a lot of spirits, you kind of have a lot of resources still to play with. When you get towards the mid to late game, Nectar of the Gods isn't nearly as impactful. We've also seen some casters go the route of utilizing Drops of Leaf instead, which is a similar card in the sense that you have some draw power, but you can actually take cards from your hand that maybe you don't want or need at the time and put them back into your deck. So when deck building, especially with decks with higher uh, cost Celestrals, Celestrals that take more uh, spirits to enchant, it's oftentimes better to consider Drops of Leaf. In this case, MBT kicks off his turn with probably the optimal first turn, Astrabit, which many consider, myself included, to be the best card, or at least one of the best cards in the game. Gorgon's Gaze is certainly up there, but Astrabit gives you a five defense wall that gets to look at the top three cards of your deck. Now, if you're familiar with Elestrals, you know that there's the term search, which many cards feature, where you search your deck for a card, you have to reveal it to your opponent, and then you can add it to your hand oftentimes. But with Astrabit's look feature, you're simply looking at the top three cards of your deck, and you don't actually have to reveal anything to your opponent, and you get to add one to your hand. So, this is a very sneaky tactic. Uh, you're obviously not able to look through the entire deck, it's just the top three. But being able to add one of those to the hand allows you to set up very efficiently for future turns. And the five defense set on Astravit proves to be a very significant Elestral body to try to hit over. As, you know, generally speaking, most Elestrals only hit five attack at their highest without any sort of buff. So Astravit is an incredible early uh, clash opener here. As Boffin's going to draw and get his turn kicked off here in the Elestriad, facing down an Astravit and no back row. And that's something that we're going to be watching as these weeks progress. A lot of these casters lack the back row right now, the counter runes we're speaking of. In the standard metagame of Alessos right now, we see casters often running anywhere from 8 to 12 counter runes. And as the weeks progress, we're going to start to see more of those counter runes introduced as they start pulling things like Shield of Achilles, Tsunami gets a little bit more widespread, and so on and so forth. Boffin's going to cast out his Sprouter into attack position, it seems. A three attack, five defense Elestral. This is an Elestral that oftentimes would be cast into defense. You can kind of play it a little bit more passively. It looks like Bob is going to play it on the offensive here. Maybe he has something up his sleeve like a Foley Forest. He's going to grab the Scythe, the Demeter, the obvious pick here in the Earth deck. And if I remember correctly from his team builder, he is bringing, say, Timber. So he's going to be trying to get out that, say, Timber and ultimately give it the Scythe to activate its effect. But in this context, giving the, the Sprouter, empowering it with the Scythe, is it going to hit over the Astravit? So I'm a little confused on this play. So Boffin is going to go for the Scythe of Demeter play. He's going to enchant his Sprouter. Let's see if he has something to add to this. This is going to give the Sprouter plus two attack and plus three defense. So if he was in defense position, he would actually be at eight defense. Um, but he's not going to be able to hit over the Astravit. So he's going to pass turn. So I'm going to just give a little bit of insight here. I would recommend not doing what Boffin just did because... He opens himself up now that if, if MBT has anything that can hit over him, uh, a Sorlet can crash into him. There's a few different things. An Earthquake, a Resting Under Laurels. Like, we know MBT has that removal because he's running Wind. I know he's got two Resting Under Laurels. And that's exactly what he plays. Oh, my God. I couldn't have written it better myself. This is why you don't want to do that. Um, Boffin ends up kind of extending a little too far there. 
and it's gonna cost him his scythe. It's gonna cost him two spirits. A more optimal play, I think, is just putting Sprouter in defense position, right? If he has the Sorlet, then he's gonna at least have to waste a spirit to change your position. But if you're in defense position, you have a five defense wall. Being in attack position, you have a five attacker, but it costs you a lot of spirits to get there, and then you just get wiped off the field with resting on your laurels. If there is a silver lining to this for Iron Boffin, it's that, you know, now the resting on your laurels is out of MBT's hand, and he doesn't necessarily have to worry about that being an issue with another Elestral. He's only got one more left in his deck, and I think he has one Earthquake, so you kind of have a little bit more insight into his removal. But MBT is going to throw down the Hydreig. It is not the Stellar one. I really want to see that Stellar one. For those who missed it, definitely go check out his opening. It was the best reaction to a Stellar of all time. <laughs> I think you guys will enjoy that. So Hydreig hits the field. I'm curious if MBT is going to go on the offensive with that Strava, and he is. So this is where things get a little dicey for Boffin because he's going to take two hits. The spear total is going to be 15-15, and that's one thing I love about Elestrals, not to toot my own horn, is you'll often find these clashes are very close because to advance in your board state, you have to use spirits, and that means you're essentially getting closer to losing. Your spirit count, your life total matters so much in this game. That's, that's the win condition. So he's going to press forward. He's going to hit for two, and now Boffin has to figure out how to respond. We know Boffin running Earth is going to have his Earthquakes. He really needs those for that Hydrake. Or maybe you save it for the Pentera later. I'm not sure what the strategy is going to be here. But this is his opening. He needs to get out and he needs to knock out that Astrabid at the very least. The thing that's scary here is any Alestral that Boffin plays that is stronger than the Hydrake simply at this stage of the game turns into Pentera very quickly. MBT can crash his Hydrake and then crash his Twindra and then get Pentera out. And if that happens, that's going to be really tough. So Boffin opts for a different strategy this turn. Goes for the defensive Sprouter play. Seems like he pulled double Sprouter out the rip. And that's going to allow him to search his deck for another Scythe of Demeter. I'm curious if Boffin's going to continue to execute this Artifact strategy as weeks progress. We saw some pretty interesting success from Artifacts from the Shady Penguin match earlier this week. Artifacts in Elestrals are often considered to be mid-tier right now. They're, they're definitely not considered to be high tier. I would say Scythe of Demeter is probably the best one that you see utilized with the exception of maybe Trident of Poseidon just because you can do what's called the Trident Lock. You can lock people out of their counter runes with Poseidon and uh, the Trident of Poseidon. So it looks like Sprouter and Pass, that's gonna be it for Boffin. We don't see any counter rune play so far in this clash. Again, something we'll look towards over the coming weeks as these casters start to get access to more of these cards. We've seen a lot of interesting strategies. I'm really curious to see going into week two, are we gonna see a lot of starter decks open? Are we gonna see more packs open? as there's some really key counter runes that you can find in some of those starter decks, like Fire containing Gorgon's Gaze. I think if any caster is an opportunity to get two Gorgon's Gaze, it's probably going to be worthwhile. MBT throws down the Sorlet, the exact card that he needs to get through this Sprouter. Now, this is so key, because if you don't have Sorlet here, he actually can't hit over the Sprouter. But with Sorlet, you can activate its effect, its active effect, and you can actually change the position of Elestra on the field by expending a Wind Spirit, as long as that Elestral is not Wind Enchanted. So he's going to be able to change the Sprouter to attack position. He's going to be able to knock it out. And then he's going to be able to hit for two Spirits directly. So uh, that's going to bring Boffin down to, I believe, 12. And while it is 12 to 13, it's a very close class right now. MBT has a lot of field control. Now we know Boffin has a Scythe of Demeter in his hand. And we know that Boffin has a handful of tools that he can utilize, like Tectoris. He's got some things like Earthquake that can help him get back into this clash. Demeter can give him the buffs that he needs. It's time for a listen-in. Using Earth Spirit to yeah. play my Tectoros. All right, let's walk through Tectoros. What's going on with this card? So this Tectoros gets plus one attack for each enchanting uh, Earth Spirit on the field. So he has plus one from his own Spirit. And what, are his, four, two. what are his base stats? 3-2? Three, 3-2. Two. Three, two. So sure. at the moment, he's 4-2. And then I will use two more earth spirits to enchant my scythe yeah so now he'll have six plus the two from the scythe so eight mm -hmm. and with my tectoros i will who's the problematic child i'll attack your sorlet yeah i was gonna say that's uh that's the one <laughs> I'm um, like who's the problem child here no so a really good comeback play from boffin getting himself right back into the the clash here he's gonna get his tectoros up to eight attack tectoros gains attack for every earth spirit on the field and that's not just your field that's your opponent's field as well so i'm really interested to see as the weeks progress if we start to see cards like tectoros come out on the opposite side of the clash 
for example mbt bringing tectorus as a counter to an earth deck or someone bringing a volcaries as a counter to a fire deck i'm very curious to see in this kind of limited format how that plays out but tectorus hits the field with the scythe it's going to be able to get a regenerated spirit because of scythe the demeter but mbt responds with earthquake very swiftly here and i'm going to give you a little insight this is pretty rough for boffin because he's going to lose his scythe to removal again I'm gonna give you guys some fun insight though. When I was designing Elestrals, one of the things that I kind of reflected back on, a lot of our runes have kind of exception carve outs. So Tsunami, for example, doesn't work against water Elestrals, right? That's like a basic example. Sorlet, it can change position of Elestrals, but not wind Elestrals, right? So there's some kind of nuances there. With Earthquake, there was a, a, a potential design space for us to make it so Earth Elestrals could not be targeted by Earthquake. We ultimately opted to not do that because I wanted to ensure that the game had like proper removal. And I think it would have made Earth a little too strong if it had that kind of immunity. But I think it's fun that I can share some of those insights as we continue to develop the game and show, you know, showcase different pieces of it. Um, as Earthquake almost didn't allow for targeting against Earth Elestrals. I think it's in a good place where it is. Uh, two costs to do removal. Generally, the preferred form of removal. We know MBT has his uh, resting on your laurels and stuff, but Earthquake is like the guaranteed. It's going to work. It's going to do what you need it to do, and you're going to be able to pop the strongest Celestials that way. He's going to cast his Jolton out. Jolton is able to search out different uh, stadiums. He's going to grab the Island of Aeolia. That's going to allow him to buff up that Hydrake and any other Wind Elestrals that he has in the future. It seems as though he's not going to cast the Island of Aeolia right now. Uh, he's just shuffling it up, but he has that as an option right now, and he's going to be able to attack Bothin for three directly. Lots of little chips here. The Sastrabbit, which was cast in the first term of the game, is still chipping down on Bothin, and Bothin continues to struggle to get back into this one. And now that that Island of Aeolia is potentially in play... It's not in play now, but it's something you need to think of. So if I'm Boffin, I, I'm thinking to myself, how do I get back in this game? And I think the way you need to do that is you need to find a way to cast an Elestral that can hold up defensively to buy you a turn to be able to execute a strategy. MBT hasn't shown any sort of counter rune play. So there's an opportunity here. If you can get out like a Spy Nymph or another Sprouter, it might be wise to actually misenchant them with a wind spirit and i know that sounds a little wonky because you're like wait if i misenchant that means my elestral has no effect but in this context if you're able to misenchant something with a wind spirit and you have five defense you can effectively ignore the potential for sorlet to change your position and you would actually benefit from the buff that you know mbt has the island of aeolia so in this context it looks like boffin may not have that spine amp or another sprouter he's gonna play gear of flora now i will say this is an elestral that generally doesn't see a lot of play there's a kind of a nuanced deck that you can utilize with fruit where you know ambrosia drataya is where you would maybe use your floor to grab a drataya or something like that or a pandasin to be able to grab another ambrosia but generally this isn't an elestral that sees a ton of play i think that there was a case here to maybe misenchant this with wind just to save yourself because you have four defense which means you're you're walling off the jolt and you're walling off the hydrate you're walling off the astrabit but if MBT casts his Island of Aeolia, now all of a sudden Hydrake's stronger than you, right? So you, you get that regen, you grab your Tectorus back, which may be crucial. But again, you're not going to be able to withstand kind of an offensive attack here from MBT. So those are just some things. I'm, I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of insight as to, to what might work uh, for you in the future. I think Misenchanting is a really cool strategy to get around things like Tsunamis, to kind of play around some of these strategies. But in this context, I just don't think Boffin has the defense for it as Sorlet hits the field once again for MBT. That's a five attacker. And now Astrabit, Hydrake, and Jolton are going to just hit directly into Iron Boffin's spirit deck. And it continues to be a rough day for Boffin as he's struggling to get any sort of momentum here, right? MBT had a great opener in this one with the Astrabit, with the Nectar of the Gods. That ultimately landed him a Resting on Your Laurels and an Earthquake. But I think when we look back at this match, as Boffin tries to climb back, and there's a chance he can, but I think I think MBT still has a, an open window here with Hydrake. I think when we look back at this match, that first turn was so crucial. If that Sprouter's in defense position and he doesn't utilize his Scythe early, there's an opportunity there where the Resting Under Laurels play doesn't actually happen because there's not enough spirits on the field to make it happen. Instead, maybe setting the Scythe to Demeter face down as a potential bluff to maybe get MBT to think something a little bit different. So I'm not trying to bash on Boffin or anything like that. This is just me trying to be constructive and help, you know, help people play. Um, I generally would say if you're going to utilize artifacts and Elestros, you're going to want to make sure that you can get the most out of them. 
and that's going to be like a mid mid game board state or if you just don't want to get kind of steamrolled early on but let, let, let's listen in for the final few plays of this clash yeah, lucky uh i will expend two spirits to okay. play nectar of the gods let's go chant. you just gotta try you know get it twisted you will win Only I could do it again. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, don't think. Don't think there's anything I can do here. Uh, you're five. Three. No, I think that I think that is it, my friend. I think Ooh. I am done. I'll do it just for formality. I will enchant a Tectoros. Yeah. So be four two, and then I'll play two runes face down. Yeah. <laughs> which really matters most profitable runes in the world and that's gonna wrap this one up boffin with no spirits left in his spirit deck the game does continue but obviously without any spirits to cast his runes those potential bluffs it's gonna be tough for him to make any sort of a comeback so mbt is gonna win week one of the illustriad with a dominant performance using wind and thunder together to ultimately gain an incredible advantage in the early game there with the astrabit and the nectar of the gods and then just kept the pressure on the entire time and boffin just simply wasn't able to set up any sort of a defense or any sort of a presence on field to really make any sort of a comeback and i think there's a few points to that i think that introducing more counter runes we're gonna make a big difference right because uh, then you have some counter play but again i i, I don't want to harp too much on it but i think that first turn of the, the clash or the second turn in this case could have been executed a little bit differently and it would have made a huge difference for iron boffin is just playing that spratter in defense utilizing its five defense stat and kind of playing a little bit slower i think when you're using a deck that has set up combo pieces like a say timber or a said terror and you're trying to activate or execute something big in the mid to late game you almost have to play slow and i think earth is really good at that right use your rama gems use your your sprouters and things like that to kind of get your pieces slowly accumulate them draw the things you need i think clovey would have been really solid here draw the pieces that you need and then go for that big swing in the mid game after your opponent has kind of put out some of their resources already so some good lessons some good learning there i hope you guys enjoyed this one be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and head over to shopalestrals.com to pick up some sweet stuff we got some uh some start of x and some sweet shirts like my mustation shirt it's pretty sweet so check all that out and uh on to week two of the illustrad we'll see you soon